Greetings, brethren, children of God, royal priesthood, God's own elect, chosen generation. I would want to welcome you once again to this channel. We welcome you. We appreciate that you support us, that you are here to share with us, learn together with us. And brethren, one thing that I always ask us to do is a way of appreciating our interaction on this channel. Would you please subscribe to our channel, like, and also share. Somebody somewhere is also ready to wait, receive the same message. Also learn what we are going to be learning. And you and me, our way continue to spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. You never know through your subscription and your sharing how many other lives you are able to change. You would touch somebody's life today because of this message. Somebody would really thank you because this message would come in handy at the very right time, at the very appropriate time. When somebody is down, they don't know what to do, they are hopeless, they have been attacked by the devil, and they are down, and nobody is available for them, they are alone. Somebody might be contemplating to take their lives right now as we speak. And you may never know, the Lord can use you through your sharing after subscribing, that this message can just pop on the phone and like a like Thank you so much, we appreciate you. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen. And today we meet again in the grace of the Lord as we continue sharing the word of God, learning the word of God. And we want to appreciate the Lord so much today that it is yet another day by his grace that once again we are healthy and we are in one piece and uh, we are able again by his grace to share his word. We want to say the God we serve is a faith. Without much ado, I want us to enter into the Word of God. And today, I'm going to be talking to us on a very common scripture. A very common scripture that everybody even Sunday schools can recite. And yet, the Word of God is alive. The Word of God is living. The Word of God is daily bread. It speaks on our lives into somebody's life on every day, on every day, daily basis, because there is always a revelation for a day. There's always, always a revelation for a situation. There's a revelation for a season. The same word, the same scripture that we could have recited as far back as we were young could still speak something new into our lives today. This is why we can never exhaust the Bible. This is why the Bible is the only book that for the past 2,000 years is still read and we still cannot finish it because it is not dead. It is alive. Glory be to Jesus Christ. So I am going to be taking us today to the book of Psalm, Psalm 23. Psalm 23. And I'm going to read from verse 1 up to verse 6. Then we shall be talking about what the Lord wants to say to us concerning this word today. And somebody will be blessed. Psalm 23 from verse 1. A psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yeah. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May the Lord bless you. Today, let's open our hearts as we hear the revelation by the Spirit of what God wants to speak to 
Amen. This psalm of David, it is speaking into our lives. And one thing that I would begin to say is there are things that are, we are being pointed to by this psalm. Beginning by the, its introduction, we hear David here speaking about God. And we are being told, we are being conscientized that God is a shepherd God. He shepherds us. He leads us. He is ahead of us. And we need to understand from the perspective of the life of the, of the people of Israel, shepherds would always walk in front. They would always go in front and their, their sheep would be following them. So God is a shepherd. He goes ahead of us. So let me give you the title of my message. The title of my message today is Enduring the Dark Places. Hallelujah. Enduring the Dark Places. He is a shepherd God who shepherds us. And he goes ahead of us. And where does he take us? He take us, takes us to green pastures. He takes us to the still waters. This is a moment of our time where the Lord is taking us through all the good times, the times of blessing, the times of plenty, the times of elevation, the times of promotion, the times that we say, wow, look what the Lord has done. He's the God who is taking us into all those areas. These are the areas that most of us as children of God, we are so good at praising him. We are so strong in worshiping and praising him and thanking him. It is a time that, you know, there is joy everywhere. There is jubilation and celebration everywhere. Here the word of, of the Lord is showing us that he is the one who leads us into such time and into such season, into such places. The same God as we continue to read Showing us now as we go, we see now that the same God is now leading us now into the valley of the shadow of death. Because here the Bible says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. I want somebody to see something here. The same God of the first part of this psalm is the one who is leading us into those areas of plenty of blessing of jubilation, of celebration, of uplifting, of promotion, of overflow, of abundance, becomes the same God who leads us again through the valley of the shadow of death. He is the same God who is leading us into the dark places. And I said, enduring the dark places. This is where the focus of my teaching is. What are the dark places? When we enter dark places, these are times where most people would want to pray prayers of asking God, where are you? We are forgetting that there was a time that he was leading us into those times that we, we celebrated, that we liked, that we rejoiced. And we were saying, look what the Lord has done. God, you are so faithful. You are a loving God. You are an omnipresent God. You are a wonderful God. And yet, we see a new season where the same God is leading us into the valley of the shadow of death. He's leading us into dark places. So what is it that we must learn, children of God, from this scripture? It must teach us that we must know that God is still leading. When we enter the dark places, know that God is still leading. The same way that he led us when we were going through the still waters, the green pastures, he is still leading us even in times where things are not well. It is very common with human beings that when things are not going well, we start to think that God has left us. We start to think that maybe God has forgotten us. We start to think that maybe there is something wrong that I have done. We start to think that maybe God is punishing me. And yet, child of God, 
it may not be so. He is still there. David here is confirming that for you are with me. Meaning that he has not left, although the times are dark. We must understand that when we go through the dark places, go through the dark places with a good attitude. How do we have a good attitude? We must have a good attitude when we have knowledge, when we have an understanding that although I am going through these times, he is still leading. He is still the same good God who is God, who is good all the time. Because we, li we like the saying, God is good all the time. So we must understand that even during these times, he still remains a good God. He is still good, although the situation does not look good. He is still God, although the situation looks like he is now our enemy. He is now like fighting us. He is now like pulling us down. Yet he remains the same God. So we must go through the dark places with the right attitude. Continue to praise him the same way you praised when you were in your green pastures. Continue to love him. Continue to save him. This is where you find that most people, when they go through their dark places, they usually give up. They throw in the towel. They move away from God. They, they leave the church. They would rather go back in the world. You find that many people, you hear them say, I was better when I was in the world. But when I started worshiping God, or when I started coming to this church, my life became worse. It is a deception of the devil. That you start to whisper in somebody's ear that, look at your life now. How far now? Were you better then? Now, are you better now than you were before you came to this place? Or before you started following Jesus Christ? So child of God, when it is dark times, when we are in the dark place, let us continue to walk with a good attitude with the knowledge that he is still leading us. It is not the devil leading us. The dark place is a place to gain life skills. Why does God allow us to go through dark places? Dark places are times that we have to learn things. There are things that God wants us to learn. When we are about to be elevated into new levels, we must go through dark places. So, do not run away. Do not abandon. Do not uh, uh, give in. Do not die when you enter the valley of the shadow of death. He says, I will not die. I will not fear. I will continue standing, knowing that the Lord is still with me. So it is a place that God is training us some new life skills, survival skills for stages that are coming. Glory be to Jesus. The dark places, when we are in our dark places, we must understand that we are like a seed. We are like a seed. We are planted. And dark places are places that allow us to germinate. When a seed is buried underground, it is taken away from the light which is outside. And it's buried in darkness. Somebody might think that the seed has died. Somebody might think that the seed has been abandoned. Somebody might think that the seed will not come again. And yet, Burying the seed in, dark, in the dark soil, it is allowing the seed to, deep, to be even more productive. It is giving the seed a, an opportunity to burst and to produce what is hidden inside it. And what is hidden inside a seed are flowers. What is hidden inside a seed are fruits that will produce even more other seeds. There is reproduction. There is multiplication. Glory be to Jesus. So a seed buried is not a seed abandoned. It is a, not a seed destroyed, but it is a seed given an opportunity to get to its greater heights. I hope I'm speaking. Verse 5, it says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. I want somebody to look at this this way. Look at the journey. The first portion is when the things were right, things were good. The green pastures, the still waters. We are praising the Lord. We are happy. We are fine. We are showing everybody and testifying to everybody of the goodness of the Lord. And we move from there. You don't remain in the good times all the time. There is always a season that comes and another season comes in. But every season has a purpose. Now we enter into the season of the dark place. 
And this is the place I have been talking about. That don't die in that place. Don't give up in that place. Don't think the Lord has forsaken you. Don't change your worship. Don't change your, 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 your confession. Hold on to your confession. Even if things are looking otherwise. You, you are still blessed. Even if when you look around, you don't have a penny in your pocket. You, you are still healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Yet there's still pain in your body. That's why the Bible says, let the sick say, I am healed. Let the poor say, I am rich. It is because it's a positive confirmation. It's a positive confession that somebody must hold a good attitude, a positive attitude during the time of the dark valley. Knowing that the Lord is still my shepherd, he is still ahead. He is taking me somewhere. And where is he taking us? Check verse 5. Verse 5 now says, he prepares a table. Now we see now, after the dark valley, after the dark places, we are now entering another season of a table being prepared. And the table comes after the valley. Meaning that the valley was a preparatory ground for the table that was coming. So, have a correct attitude, knowing that the test that we are going through, the test that you are going through right now, is for the sake of the testimony that is ahead coming. Child of God, this word must be strengthening somebody who is in the dark valley right now. If you thought that you, the Lord is abandoning you, if you thought that the Lord is forsaken, if you thought that this must be the act of the devil, think again. He remains a shepherd. He is a shepherd God. He will still go ahead. He is still leading, although things don't look like they are going the direction that we want. Remember what Jesus Christ said. He says, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. So he's talking about a process of being buried, a process of dying, a process of, life, of being abandoned, being uh, uh, forsaken in dark places for some time. Yet it is an opportunity of germination, of blossoming, of multiplication and fruitfulness. Now we are seeing a table being placed there in the presence of enemies. All those people who were scoffing at you when you were during your time of darkness, your dark places. People were laughing at you. Look at the God you have chosen. Look at what is now happening to you from the time that you started believing in Christ or going to this church or becoming a child of God. Look now, you are worse. Those are your enemies. Now look now. When the table is set, the enemies must see. It means this is a testimony that must be seen and it shall be seen by everybody. Everyone who experience the rising of your sun. When your sun rises, it shall be seen by everybody. Those that thought you were finished, those that thought you were buried, those that thought you were dead, those that had written you off, they will be surprised when they see you blossoming, when they see your sun rising, when they see your promotion, when they experience your elevation. And they shall be standing by your table, looking at the buffet of your table that has been placed there with all kinds of sub, sub, supply that the Lord has brought up upon your life. But they are not partakers of it. Glory be to Jesus Christ. A seed has potential. And you are a seed. I am a seed. Everybody is a seed. The seed has potential in it. In that barrier, it still carries its potential. Something has to die first. The Lord must take away some things from us that he does not desire. If we are going to become vessels unto honor. Vessels unto honor are vessels that are used for special purposes in the house of the Lord. But for a vessel to become a vessel unto honor, it, must, it begins as clay. It must have some roughages taken out, some stones, some sticks taken out. And until it is fine soil, mixed with water, placed in a, 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 on a mold, molded into a vessel, put in, a, a, in, in, in an oven, heated under massive uh, temperatures for it to be strong. It comes out strong. Then it is painted and placed in a shell as a vessel. 
don't die. Don't break in the oven. The fire is not there to kill us. The fire is not there to kill you, child of God. The fire is to strengthen you. You will come out strong. You will come out and even be a, a flower. You will come out and you will be even painted in many colors and placed in a shell where everybody shall see the glory of God upon your life. Glory be to Jesus Christ. So what is it, child of God, that has died? What is it that has gone in the dark places right now? It may be your joy. During this phase of your life, joy has been taken from you. Because there is something that has happened. There is something that has happened. When this joy has died, I can assure you that its death is going to produce everlasting joy. We have died to the joys of the world as children of God. When everybody is going for parties, everybody goes for discourse, everybody is going out there. But we as children of God, we have chosen the narrow path where we have died to the pleasures of the world. Why have we allowed the pleasures of the world to die? So that there is a germination of another kind of joy, which is everlasting joy, that we shall be having in eternal, in eternal life. We are sacrificing the joys of this world so that we can have joy that is everlasting. Glory be to Jesus Christ. What is it that is happening? What dark place are you in? Are you broke? Is it a financial attack? What is happening financially in your life? Somebody may be broke today as a, as a preparation for abundance that is coming. And the Lord can be preparing you for what is coming. Just placing you in a position where you would understand what lack means. So that by the time you are in your abundance, you would understand when you meet somebody who is saying, they slept on an empty stomach. You would understand somebody who is saying, my kids don't have even shoes to eat. In your times of abundance, it will be easy for you to fork out and to help out somebody that may need help. So don't worry, child of God, of what may be happening to you. That situation of being broke and be a preparation for financial abundance that is coming. And that season will definitely come. What other dark place are you? Have you been rejected? You may never understand that that rejection is just a place, it's just a seed that is waiting to germinate and something new will come out of that rejection. You will have new and better people coming to your life. Maybe these people that you deem rejecting you today were not the right people that God wanted for you. And God is now bringing new people. There's a germination of new people that are coming into your life. These people that are going to help to change your life. People that will be of beneficial to your life. People that shall contribute to your uplifting in your life. They are destiny makers. They are divine uh, 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 connections that the Lord is bringing to your life. So you may be sad today because somebody that you thought was close to you has abandoned you. Your relatives, your friends, your workmates, they've abandoned you. They've rejected you. You may never know that this is a time of a dark period. You are in your dark valley. Because something new is about to germinate. A new breed of people that have the destiny of God attached to them for your life are the ones that you are waiting for to manifest in the new season that is coming. Because verse 5 is telling us that a table is set. Definitely your table has been set. It is just a matter of time for the season of the valley of the shadow of death to pass. Then you enter into a time of testimony. You may be crying today. What is causing you to cry? Different situations of life. Different challenges of your life. Things that you are saying, how will I come out of this? How will I solve this that has caused a heartache? That has caused painful uh, stomach pains, heartache, headaches in your life. But let me tell you, child of God, this weeping, the Bible says, weeping, they enjoy it. But joy comes in the morning. The Bible is simply telling us that the night is just a season. But the morning is yet another season. And there is a guarantee that indeed a morning will come. There is no night that remains forever. Night has its own hours. And the hours of the night, they will have to pass. They can never be stagnant forever. It is guaranteed that morning will definitely come. Meaning that any season that we are, we are going through, 
right now is never a permanent season. There is always a new season that comes. A day comes, a day passes. A season comes, a season comes. There is always time for everything. There is time for planting, time for reaping. There is time for life and time for dying. There is time to weep and time to laugh. There is time to cry and there is time to celebrate. This song is speaking to somebody. Somebody could be you that is listening to me right now. With the different situations in which you are right now. But the Lord knows and he understands. And I want you to know one thing. He is a shepherd God. He is still in front of us. He is leading you somewhere. Keep your faith. Hold on to your faith. Trust in him. Continue to confess positive. Have the correct attitude. Stand your ground. Do not allow the devil to whisper negatively to you. Stand your ground, child of God. The morning is definitely coming. And you are coming out of that situation, whether people like it or not, whether the devil likes it or not, whether the enemy holds on or stands in whatever manner he may, I can assure you, you are coming out of that situation. And I want to pray for somebody who is in a situation right now. I may not know exactly the situation that you are in, but I can tell you that the Lord himself, he is aware of every situation. He's an all-knowing God. He knows all things. And I declare in the name of Jesus that you are coming out of that situation, that that season is coming to pass in the name of Jesus, that a new season of a table being set for you is coming for you, child of God. Do not despair. Do not lose heart. Do not change your confession. Stand your ground. Continue to trust in the Lord your God, or he will never leave you nor forsake you. You are blessed, child of God. I know somebody is going to testify. That men of God, after I listened to that message, I saw a new season coming up. I saw a table being set up in the, in the presence of my enemies. After I listened to that message, I was strengthened and I went through the situation, my season of the valley of the shadow of death. And here am I today, I'm celebrating. Can you listen to this? If you are in a situation, continue to confess. Listen to this message over and over. And I tell you, it is drawing closer to the next level of your situation which is a situation that everybody must be admiring and say, wow, we never knew that you were in the right direction. Child of God, may the Lord continue to bless you. Today, this is the word of the Lord. This is the word the Lord is speaking. It is impressed upon my heart that I may share with you today. Do not despair. He is your God. Jesus loves you and we love you. And child of God, continue to be with us. More and more of the word of God is coming. Continue supporting this ministry. Continue to support this channel by even subscribing and sharing this way with your loved ones. May the Lord bless you. May he increase you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he raise his countenance upon you. Bless you as you have come to this world. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Shalom.